Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walilah Alham. Alhamdulillah, Bilalimin, Eid Mubarak. Alhamdulillah, Bilalimin, we, which are the favors of your Lord, we you deny. We are, we are here. SubhanAllah. Wow. Wow. SubhanAllah. We're here, and we're here on the Eid, and special holy day uh, to thank our Lord, Allah Almighty, for all the blessings, another opportunity. When there's a blessed day, a blessed day, it's a blessed day for everywhere, everywhere, east and west, north and south. And because of those who are have just uh, finished uh, uh, the Hajj, and they praising their Lord for the whole time that they're going around the Kaaba, they're praising Allah Almighty. From the time they're going through Safa Mara, they're praising Allah Almighty. From the time they're in Mudalafa, they're praising Allah Almighty. From the time they're on Arafat from uh, Fajr to Maghrib, they're praising Allah Almighty. They, after that, their beings, they cannot feel themselves. They only feel as one. They don't feel as individuals. The men, when they go on Hajj, they wear two-piece white, top and bottom. The women wear white. The, you have, this is the only time the men and women are praying beside each other, going to the Hajj, shoulder to shoulder, calling out to their Lord, Allah Almighty, not looking left, not looking right, only focusing on Allah Almighty. Allah gives us all kinds of signs to look to Allah Almighty only in this life and in the next life. And it's a training. It's a training. That's why Allah Almighty sent Islam as a means of training us how we may start to be disciplined. Because discipline is a very, very high station. No one can reach anything without discipline. You have a, a, a champion athlete or an entertainer or, or a scholar or anyone who reaches any kind of greatness, they have reached it because of a discipline, patiently persevering, having restraint and sacrificing, and staying true to what they were pursuing. When we stand up in line for the prayer, it is in order that Allah Almighty has someone to lead the people and to represent that Allah Almighty sent guidance to humanity and humanity has to follow guidance. Guidance comes in the person of someone. So when you have someone who was praying, leading the Salat, everyone else is standing in rows behind them. They are focusing on a spot on the floor where they're going to prostrate. Not looking to their left, not looking to their right, not looking up, not looking around. Focusing on their Lord. They are worshiping, praising their Lord. And who is, they, who is leading the prayer? They have been ordered, we have been ordered to hear and obey, to follow them. When they say Allah Akbar, we say Allah Akbar. When they move, we move. That's a training. That's symbolic. That Allah Almighty sends guidance to human beings for us to hear and obey. The only way back to Allah Almighty is through guidance. And He sends the guidance to human beings. Don't think that anything we do in Islam is not teaching us to accept Islam. When someone who's leading the prayer, when they bow, we bow. When they give Islam to the right, we give it to the right. They give it to the left, we give it to the left. We don't do it before them. Why? Because we will be going ahead of guidance. It's the same when someone is giving the kubba. All eyes should be focused not left or right or up or down, but on the, the one who is giving the kubba because we are in prayer. We're remembering our Lord, Allah Almighty. You cannot remember Allah Almighty except by looking to Allah. That that Allah has ordered to represent him is a divine order. 1,500 years they've been having the, the Jummahs on Friday. They've been having the two E's for over 1,500 years. That is a divine order. After the five fasting and after the Hajj, this is a divine order. Through the 
Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu they say that he is an ordinary man. But yet, that order that came to his heart has filtered 1,500 years to the hearts of believers. I didn't say unbelievers. I said believers who are keeping that order that he received. Fast during the month of Ramadan. Establish five prayers. Give charity. Make hajj if you can in your lifetime. Keep the Juma on Friday. Keep the two Eids. That's an order that was given to the Prophet Muhammad 1,500 years ago. And there are 2 billion people around the world gathering this day because of that divine order that came to the heart of beloved Muhammad Sallallahu That love through his heart has filtered to those people and they had mosques all around the world, east and west and north and south. Takbir! 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 You think he is ordinary and Islam is a joke? We the joke! We cannot change what Allah Almighty has sent to His beloved Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We're always trying to change the rules and regulations based on our own desires. No matter what has happened, Shaitan's will has not been able to change the will of Islam. It's still growing up. Muslims and believers are still growing up even in the spite of Shaitan. They're growing up in all kind of adverse situations. Coming up in broken homes, distorted homes, decadent homes, and accepted Islam. Being in bad environments. People worshiping shaitan drunk, not just drunk from alcohol and drugs and all kind of synthetics, but drunk for the love of dunya. And yet believers are still coming up in the midst of that decadence. They are still keeping the orders, even though Shaitan is on them like white on rice, to slow them down and to stop them from doing their duty. There's no compulsion in religion. Truth stands out clear from falsehood. This is not something we have to do. Allah Almighty could make everybody to believe from east to west, north to south. But he doesn't do that. Allah created us with his spirit. Breathed in us his spirit. We've inherited from our grandparents. And yet we allow ignorance to compete with wisdom? You cannot argue with an ignorant person. You will never win against ignorance. You can only guide those who are wise. Because those who are wise will hear and obey. They're not going to debate wisdom. We're looking at the same sun that everyone that Allah Almighty has brought from the spiritual world to the physical. We're watching the same sun that they watched. Nothing's changed. We're human beings like them, no extra tails, no extra eyes. Lies always sent guidance to them because at one time there was, there was no need for Allah Almighty to send prophets to us to remind us. We were just obedient people following the will of Allah Almighty and we were just good people. We enjoined good and we forbade evil. We fought against evil. We guarded ourselves against evil. We don't guard ourselves against evil now. We allow shaitan to come up in our homes. We allow him to come up in our places of worship. How? We bring shaitan with us. We become his agents. It's miraculous to get three people that's going to be on the same page. Same mind, same heart. It's miraculous these days. You're talking about people that are here to establish the kingdom of heaven on earth. It's going to take a miracle. But 
shaitan is not going to stop it. Let me read to you what happened to Pharaoh. We took the children of Israel across the sea. Pharaoh and his hosts followed them in insolence and spite. At length, when overwhelmed with the flood, he said, I believe that there is no God except him whom the children of Israel believe in, and I am of those who submit to Allah and Islam. Pharaoh said that. Shaitan's right hand man, but he didn't say it until the flood was getting ready to come on his doggone head. Then Allah says, it was said to him, and now, now, ah, uh, now, but a little while before, was thou a rebellion, rebellion, and thou didst mischief and violence. This day shall we save thee in thy body, that thou mayest be a sign to those who come after thee. But verily many among mankind are heedless of our signs. When I was living in Egypt, they had Pharaoh's body in the museum. Allah says, I preserved his body to be as a sign. All that Pharaoh was doing, he was enslaving the bad Israel people. Moses had to come to him with miraculous uh, 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 doings. He had all of his wazirs to throw their staffs to overcome Moses. Truth falsehood was trying to overcome truth. Allah shows us all the time, falsehood has no roots. So how is something that has no roots is going to overcome something that has roots? No one stops truth. I don't stop it, you don't stop it. We can just allow our egos to think that we're running something, we ain't running nothing. He said, she said, you know, it was a time during the time of the prophet, peace be upon him, and that the Sahabas, may Allah be pleased with them, Allah is always teaching us through human beings like us. Don't think that they were any different from us in the way of rebellion and being obedient. Same people coming to a woman like us, had to eat, sleep, and drink, like us, had to procreate just like us. During Ramadan, the, the Sahabas, some of them were throwing up. And when they were throwing up, they were throwing up meat. So I said, are you fasting? Yes, we're fasting, we're fasting. And yet they're throwing up meat. They were throwing up meat because they were backbiting the flesh of their brothers and sisters. They were flesh eaters. Backbiting. Shaitan's tool for dividing and conquering. Just like those Sahabas were throwing up and Allah Almighty was exposing them to the Prophet and to themselves. Falsehood is exposed. It will be thrown up and out. Truth stands out clear from falsehood. Truth will never be defeated by falsehood. We can carry that crap all we want to. You can think that those whom Allah Almighty has had an authority of us to, to, to guide us, we can fight them and sway them all we think. But that's just an illusion in our mind. Everything has a fixed time. Don't you know one day our time is coming when we're going to be in the graveyard? Imagine it. We're in a box being lowered down six feet. 